The year is 1997. A young boy is whisked into a journey of a lifetime broadcasted on the televisions of Japanese children. Skip about a year and that same boy makes his way into English television through American broadcasting. That boy, Ash Ketchum. That journey, Pokemon. Let's be honest, if you were born in the 90s or even a little ways off, you most likely watched the original Pokemon series. The old cutting edge show that features 150 something odd creatures that shout their own names out. Watched as a 10 year old boy left his home wearing a stupid hat, his womanizing friend catching behind him, and the girl he never returned to bite to. I mean, it's been 20 years, get on that. What are you doing? I'm borrowing this. That's my bike! Hey, what happened to your bike? You happened to my bike! You were probably really excited about Mewtwo Strikes Back, the first movie and arguably the best one. <laughs> when they gave out free ancient Mew cards to ticket holders that nowadays is people seem to think costs a hundred bucks. Let, let me let me tell you a little secret. They don't. I own like three ancient Mew cards. I'm either like the best Jew in the world or I'm, you know, just buying them cheap because they're cheap. Mm -hmm. There's no arguing that the original Pokemon series was amazing, especially for a lot of people my age. But what happened? Somewhere in the 2000s, something did happen. The show probably had a similar viewership, but there was a big issue. The characters we grew to love and enjoy parted ways. There was an episode of Pokemon where Misty, Brock, Ash, they all walked a different path, literally. They leave each other, but the journey continues, question mark. Brock comes back, but many of the old fans didn't. So what happened? Here are my ideas. People grew up. A new audience came in. It was best to revamp the show. A lot of people who were watching the old Pokemon show basically just stopped watching after the big separation or even just a little bit before that. Here's the thing. Pokemon is good. It's a great show. Teaches nice lessons about friendship, rips your goddamn heart out, and then fixes it with a joke. Oh no, it's raining! Ah. Hey, I know! I'll use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan! Then new season, new heroes, new journey. But here's the thing. Pokemon feels like it was never supposed to be like that. Never supposed to be a new journey, never even a new team. It went from catching them all to being the very best to a Pokemon master, but he never really did. In the old show, the promise of catching all of them made sense. It felt possible. And when it became impossible, they changed it. Now, it feels even less possible. Each time a new cast came on, it was a redo over and over and over. But here's the thing. Pokemon got a little bit stale. It got predictable. It became boring. The voice cast changed, and while that wasn't necessarily a bad thing to happen, the viewers changed as well, and the older people like myself, we just kind of moved on with our lives. You know, the skinnier Pikachu fucking got, the skinnier our viewership became. Done. R.A.P. Pokemon. Then, something happened. Premiering on November 17th, 2016, Alola to a new adventure. Pokemon Sun and Moon aired for the first time ever on Japanese televisions with a new art style, a new theme, and a new supporting cast with an emphasis on nostalgia. It was different. It was updating. It was no longer stale. 
What even happened in the seasons before? Because I don't know. When I look back to the last shows, the animation is nowhere near as beautiful, so why the sudden change? Here's the thing. The Pokemon series has often changed its art style. It isn't the first time, and it certainly isn't the last time. But it's the first of its kind. The anime stocky look of Pokemon suddenly became a real cartoon. A living cartoon meant for this generation. The reason that it had to change is because the viewers changed. You can't keep dishing out the same thing over and over again and expect people to just accept it. Let's be honest, the old series looked like hot garbage on a goddamn stick waving around aimlessly in the dark as people in their late teens and early 20s screamed, I want to be the very best like no one ever was, but they weren't watching. Why on earth are you making a show for people who weren't fucking watching your show? Then finally, Pokemon Haboom came to the realization, oh hey, they aren't watching, I wonder why, and it's because it was hot garbage on a stick waving in the dark clinging to dear life on people who weren't even watching your show. Here's the thing, if you love or hate the new show's style, it doesn't matter, it's regardless. It isn't made for you anymore, and that's why it's doing so much better. And while the show definitely is nowhere near the original, it's got some good things that best the old show. After all, let's talk about pacing. Can you believe how quickly Ash gets his Pokemon in the old show? How fast the fucking Caterpie goes from being a worm fucker to bye-bye Butterfree? It's pretty fucking quick. Season 1, Episode 21. That's a short time for development, and every single Pokemon after that is just like, quickly to explain, and then a defuse of a situation, but oh no no no, not Sun and Moon, no way. It takes so long for him to catch that goddamn Litten, and he's still unsure who or what a fucking Tapu Koko is. And, and listen, old series was like, ho oh, oh, in first episode, episode one, bruh. Granted, I guess he met Tapu Koko early on too in Sun and Moon, but it's already established Ash Ketchum has an act for being in the right place at the right time. Okay, so we're just gonna ignore that. So, regardless if you like the new show or not, I strongly believe this difference between the old and new is finally something to look forward to. It's no longer dishing out trash because, you know, it thought we were all still watching. That's the thing. The shows until now thought everyone who was watching the old show was still watching. That's 20 years of watching, okay? I don't have, I don't have that much time to watch One Piece, let alone Pokemon. Someone at Pokemon HQ was like, well, shoot, dude. I wonder if maybe we can just make this show for younger people and give Easter eggs every once in a while to help the new viewers understand who the character is. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm fine. Actually, I'm good at dealing with Tauros. See, I've caught some. You know, instead of assuming everyone from 1998 is actively watching from day one, season one, it's definitely not perfect. But it is refreshing, and I can honestly say that it matches up to the older series in some way. If I was the same age now that I was when I watched Episode 1, Season 1 of Pokemon Series 1, I'd probably be just as hooked as I was when I was little. Pokemon is coming back in a big and fresh way. More people are collecting cards, more people are invested in Pokemon, and way more people are watching the television show. We finally have a show that matches, and we can possibly outmatch the original. Who knows, it might turn into a repetitive thing that never advances in plot, or it might introduce a whole new generation to what we fell in love with as children. With all that said, I guess what I'm getting at, Sun and Moon saved Pokemon from dying. It saved it so hard, it was on life support, and now someone just busted him with the cure for fucking cancer and was like, Not today, Ash Catsum! Catsum! <laughs> Not today, Ash Catsum! You're gonna be the very best like no one ever fucking was! So I guess the narrator is right. Our journey does continue. I'm Ash Catsum! 
I came from Pallet Town in the Kanto region. And this is my good buddy Pikachu. Nice to meet ya. Pika Pika. I will journey to gain the wisdom of Pokemon training. And I hereby declare to the Pokemon of the world, I will be a Pokemon Master. Pokemon Master! That is what I'll... Ash, get to bed! <laughs> It's 11 o'clock, and you should be asleep. But tomorrow I begin my Pokemon journey. I can't sleep. <laughs>